Hello, everyone, and inside today's Locked On Canadians, we're going to be talking prospect goalies, Habs who were go- former Habs in the Stanley Cup final, whether or not Shea Weber will get his name on the Stanley Cup or not, or, and finally, should the Habs trade their first round pick? Do I mean the fifth overall pick or do I mean the 31st overall pick? You'll have to tune in and more inside today's show. You are Locked On Canadians, your daily podcast on the Montreal Canadiens. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new look. Locked on Canadians, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where you get your team every single day, wherever you get your daily podcasts, here on YouTube, Sirius XM app, anywhere you could possibly think of, you will find us. I am one of your hosts. I am Scott Matlin. I am joined, as always, by the active stick, Laura Saba. And Laura, we got fancy new backgrounds. We got fancy new music that I don't know how to play around with yet. We are on a new streaming platform, so there are a few hiccups in uh, just the way the episode flows. Please bear with us. We are learning this as we go, but we are so excited to bring you this brand new updated version of Lockdown Canadians. And Laura, before I keep talking before you have a chance to speak. How are you doing? It was hot as all get out today in New York. I don't know if it's the same in Montreal, but we actually have some news to talk about for the first time in like, Four and a half weeks, I'm estimating at this point. It's been a while, um, and it is a new look. I'm very excited about this new platform that we have because, as a lot of our listeners have noted, you know, there's there were some audio issues with the previous one. There were some visual issues with the previous one. So very, very excited right now. Um, and this is still going to enable us to do live shows, so make sure you guys will stay tuned because we'll be announcing a really, really fun one, and it's coming up in just a couple of weeks. Just like the draft, just like, you know, all kinds of free agency. It's it's not that far away. We're in the Stanley Cup final. It's set. And for those of you thinking, oh, new look show might be different people. Too bad. We're going to be around for a while. Uh, but I am excited to talk hockey with you as always, Scott. It is one of the highlights of my day. And we do have things to talk about. In the previous episode, we had talked a little bit about Uh, players needing a contract or else the Canadians will let their rights expire on June 1st. And one of those players was Frederick Dishow, currently a goaltender for Frölunda in the SHL. Uh, Danish goalie played at the World Championships. Today, uh, Guillaume Lanfrancois for La Presse put out an article. The Canadians will not be offering Frederick Dishow a contract. Nothing at all. His rights will expire May is 30 or 31 days. I don't think it matters. Anyways, June 1st, Frederick D. Show's rights with the Canadians May will expire. 31 days. So when the listeners are listening to this show, it'll be the 31st of May. And then at the day after that, his rights will expire. He will go to UFA. He is going to go back to Fro London next year. I believe Patrick Bexell had talked about that already. So that is not unexpected I guess a little bit because they'd wanted to sign him I think they would have done so after the end of his season before world championships the interesting part is here on that list from cap friendly yesterday it was noted that Joe Verbatic who played in the ECHL and played with the Laval Rocket for a little bit this season needed to have his rights uh, signed he needed to sign an NHL deal or his rights would expire Andrew Zadarnowski, one of my co-writers and good friends over at Habs Eyes on the Prize, mentioned that Verbatic left the OHL before he turned 20 years old, signing with the Rocket and the Lions at age 19. As a result, the Montreal Canadiens retain his rights for four years instead. So he has two more years on top of that. His rights will not expire now until 2025. I believe that summer, probably the 2024 point. So he is free, I believe, to sign an AHL deal with the Rocket or with the Lions again. He does not need an NHL deal at this exact moment, which is probably good news for the Canadians who wanted prospects in the minor leagues. We talked about Jakob Dobish will be with the Rocket or Lions next year. Caden Primo somewhere in the mix. 
we talk a lot about planning and Kent Hughes being a step ahead here. I'm surprised D-Show didn't get a contract. I thought he had done enough to potentially earn that, spend some time with the AHL club, and maybe have a shot. I was a fan of the Gnome. I know Patrick Bexell was. He's talked to him a lot, and a lot of fans were intrigued to see him. But maybe it's just a matter of there wasn't space or there's something else cooking, and we don't quite know. But I got to say, I'm glad they managed to find a way to retain one of these prospect goalies that they still have that. They have prospects potentially at each tier, depending on how you feel about Caden Primo. Uh, I know the minor leagues are more my thing, but it's good to see that they're looking forward to the future. Even if Verbatic isn't the guy, they now have two more years to find out if he's the guy instead of having to rush a decision and pick one or the other uh, before June 1st in this year. I, I have to say, Scott, I'm quite surprised that they didn't retain their rights to D-Show because their goaltending is such a question mark right now. What is the future of this team's goaltending? Nobody knows except hopefully Kent Hughes and Jeff Gordon, because if they don't, we're in trouble. Is it? Are they just trying to start over from scratch? I mean, we've had Patrick Bexell on, and we've talked so much about how intriguing Frederick Dishow is for very many reasons. And it's just, you know, I know goalies take a longer time to develop, all of that. It takes a while before we can see what we've got. But it's quite interesting to me that they're not retaining him because there doesn't at this moment seem to be anybody else on their mind, in their pipeline, uh, as their target, or even in the draft. I mean, the number of goalies in this draft is few and far between. And, you know, the, even the best one will, will be in a later round, most likely. I don't think that anybody would spend a first round pick on Augustine as good as he is. Someone will, because there's always someone who's going to make a crazy pick. At the, if there's anything we've learned at the NHL draft is all bets are off of what people will do there. And the thing is, I think it was our friend Ian Bauer who pointed out today on Twitter what their uh, current goaltending pipeline looks like. It's Alan Montembeau in the NHL as of this moment. Caden Primo caught in flux. Jakob Dobish. Joe Verbatic, and I believe Philip DeRosier will likely be coming back next season, whether it's with the Ro- Lions or with the Rocket, I don't know. And in terms of prospects, now that D-Show is no longer signed outside the NHL circle, it's Emma Croteau, who I believe is going to Nebraska Omaha for school after this. There's not a lot in that pipeline, as we've talked about, and we've talked with Sebastian High. I don't think we've talked with Tony Ferrari about this yet, and we are looking to get – one of the other goaltending experts on here for this. What does the Canadians pipeline look like? Who are they going to add in this draft? And I think they will add a goaltender in this draft. The need is too glaring to fill that pipeline in a little bit. They might take two goalies. Hell, they might take four goalies. Take 12 goal. Don't take 12 goalies for the love of no, God. Don't actually don't take, take 12, 12 goalies. goalies. <laughs> We're going to make a goalie megazord. You can't score goals if there's 12 goalies on the ice. Cause one, that's too many players rules so <laughs> as i spiral out on this one here because uh the enter the late night second wind is kicking in that's 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 the news of the day is that the canadians are not offering frederick de show a contract not totally unexpected maybe a little bit disappointing as a fan of european prospects however we have other things to move on to the stanley cup final is set we're going to take a look at some of the former Montreal Canadiens who are playing in the Stanley Cup final and whether or not the former captain will get his name engraved on the trophy should one of the clubs win. All that coming up in our next segment. But first, today's show was brought to you by our friends at FanDuel Sportsbook. Make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs. The finals are starting this week. And because right now, new customers can get a no sweat first bet up to $2,000. $500. That is $2,500. If in bonus bets, if your first bet doesn't win, it's so super easy. It's safe, secure. There's great promotions every day. Make a same game parlay for threes drained, point scoring. Who's going to score the first basket? Everything FanDuel has you covered, and you will get paid out instantly. There is no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sports book. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. And get a no sweat first bet up to twenty five hundred dollars. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA and us here at Locked On. 
And as always, please make sure you are betting responsibly anytime you are using FanDuel. So the Stanley Cup final is set. It is the Vegas Golden Knights. It is the Florida Panthers. And I realize on our new screen now, I cannot hold my hands like I used to. So it looks like I am just waving back and forth here. I got to say, in terms of purely chaotic Stanley Cup finals, this has to be at the top. And my first thought was, how can I make the Stanley Cup final about the Montreal Canadiens? And that's what we're going to do. Because one, I'm going to steal the Leaf fan bit and make this about our team. And the biggest question is, what are the former Habs up to in this series? And I actually do not think there are many of them playing for either side in this. I think there are two two former Canadians in this series, one of whom is not even playing anymore, and we will get to that. But I think the one former Montreal Canadian playing in all of this is Nick Cousins for the Florida Panthers, which feels deeply weird and also like that was 10 years ago, not two or three years ago when he was here. Uh, It feels weird that there's not that many Canadians ties. And as I let Laura take the stand here, I'm going to double check my work here real quick. Well, that's exactly it. Like, if you look at the rosters of who's actually playing, you, you know, you'd think in, in my in my head, I was about to say, well, what about Max Pacioretty? Well, Max Pacioretty is no longer on the Vegas Golden Knights and has not been since the beginning of this season when he was traded to the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, he was going to be my staple. He was going to be my go-to. And I was just trying to think, you know, who else could there possibly be? We've been watching this team um, or both these teams. Did you, did you <laughs> flag somebody I... down? Are you waving at me? I did. I already discovered that I've made one mistake here because also playing for the Florida Panthers, uh, famous Montreal Canadian Eric Stahl is also on the Florida Panthers playing with his brother. I also Mark thought Stahl. he was on the on the Carolina Hurricanes this season. <laughs> I had completely forgotten that he was on the Panthers this year, and it's I'm looking at the Vegas roster. There are no formal former Montreal Canadians on that roster right now, um, unless you count. No, there's there's no former, and we will get to the actual name we're going to mention on that. But it's Nick Cousins and Eric Stahl who don't exactly play a ton of minutes for the team here. But that's you know not unexpected. Nick, you know, uh, Nick Cousins was not more than a bottom six guy, and Eric Stahl is in his twilight. So my question Eric is: Stahl Does having two f- was too old to play when he was on that Stanley Cup run with the Montreal Canadiens? That was supposed to be his last hurrah originally, and then I'm being nice. Yes, I'm being. There's nice. a lot we could say about Eric Stahl, but that is we have talked about that in a prior episode with all of this, and we're gonna we're not we don't need to rehash all that. I guess my question is now: Does this impact our rooting? I, it doesn't matter. The Canadians are picking 31st to 32nd, regardless of the outcome here. And at this point, I don't really care because it's one pick difference at the end of the first round. Does having two former Canadians sway your thought on who to root for in the Stanley Cup final? I'm actually rooting for Florida, despite the two former Canadians that are on the <laughs> on the on the roster. I mean, we know what Nick Cousins has uh, been accused of doing. We know that what Eric Stahl has said. You know, they're not exactly at the top of my list of favorite players, uh, but I'm still rooting for the Florida Panthers as a story. You know, Bobrovsky, uh, Kachuk. There's so much to love there. Uh, and honestly, despite the injury issues, you know, Ekblad's always been one of my favorite players. Barkov is a great player. Like, there's tons of guys on there that you kind of want to root for, even if you don't necessarily want to root for either Nick Cousins or for uh, for Eric Stahl. But then you look at the the Vegas Golden Knights, and there's elements of that team that you like. But as a whole, they're not a, an easy team to root for as an institution, um, as you know, <laughs> if that makes sense. Like, so you could like elements of the Vegas Golden Knights. You could cheer for elements and you could cheer for the story and the idea. But as an organization, they're not necessarily, they're kind of, they're not the Death Star. They're not the, like, they're not the villains, but they're one of the (laughs) villains. It's because their Twitter account's annoying. And I'm rooting for the Chaos Kitties and all of this, to be quite honest with you, which is also what I'm going to call the Florida Panthers from now on. Also, uh, to another sports site, why did you put a leopard in your promo for an entire other thing, maybe for the mailbag that we can do that rant. I guess my next question here, Laura, and it's a very simple one. 
Shea Weber is a Vegas Golden Knight. He was famously traded there this summer by the Canadians for Evgeny Dodonov. And my question is, he's been skating with the Henderson Silver Knights. He's been skating with the Golden Knights a little bit. And I'm wondering, if the Golden Knights win the Stanley Cup, do you think they would put Shea Weber's name on there for the first time in his career? They would try but he would not be eligible because there's a certain number of minimum games you have to have played in the regular season or a certain number of games. Like it's either and there's an or so either in the regular season or in the playoffs or a combination of the two. And he has not played officially any games, but I think if you're the Vegas golden Knights for all the classless stuff they've done, you would still try to get his name on the Stanley cup there. I am looking at this right now. Uh, criteria for a player's name on the Stanley Cup played half the regular season, one game in the Stanley Cup final. They also have the ability to petition the league, which is what the Blackhawks did. I'm not sure for which player, but you have the ability to petition for that. And my thought is if there's any player on this team that they would likely do, because it is a huge gesture of goodwill, I don't know if Weber would ask them to, is the thing, and I doubt he would because. You know, that's not who Shea Weber is. He's the kind of person who would want to have played in order to get his name there. Could you imagine like game one rolls around and Shea Weber rolls out on the third pairing for the Vegas Golden Knights? Like the absolute chaos that would go along with that. He plays one shift. So one Stanley Cup final game. He does the Steven Stamkos thing from the Tampa's first cup where he played like one game, scored a goal and left and never came back. Imagine he does that. Like, are we furious that they basically, it's like, put him out there? Or are we like, this is very clearly trying to get his name on the Stanley Cup? Because I can see them doing that. They'd be like, Shay, you take one shift. We're going to jack you up full of whatever painkillers we got. Let's go get your name on a cup, buddy. And then he just sits on the bench for the rest of the game. I would see them doing it. Honestly, like, because the thing is, the Vegas Golden Knights are, like, very kitschy and tacky, but they're not very cutesy. So it could go either way. Like, if I were in charge of that organization, I would absolutely get that. I, I would absolutely do that. I would, I would tell the coaches, you know, it, it does put yourself in a difficult position because you are sitting someone in order to play Shea Weber for one whole entire game. So you better be confident that this is going to work out. But I would still try. I think if I were in charge, I would try. Uh, but I also just think that Shea Weber is that kind of guy that'll be like, well, I wasn't with them every step of the way or I wasn't contributing this whole time. So, you know, but I, I also feel like, you know, Vegas loses nothing by trying to petition for his name and it could work. I, th- I think at the very least they will try to petition to get Shea Weber's name on there because it is, it's a great show of sportsmanship and like, you know, I hate the word classy, but it is kind of classy. I just don't know if Shea Weber would actually go for it. However, we're going to, we're going to transition a little bit more. We talked about the Canadians first round picks. Are they picking 31st, 32nd? I have a new question for everybody. Should they trade their first round pick? We're going to talk about that coming up in our final segment. We are back here at Locked On Canadians. As always, you can follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Canadians. Locked On Canadians at gmail.com. If you have long questions or suggestions for things you want us to talk about that you cannot fit in whatever the Twitter character limit is today, I'm sure it will change tomorrow because that's what the site does. My question is very simple. Should the Canadians trade their first round pick? And no, I do not mean fifth overall, unless you get a package deal that allows you to move up and it's too good to ignore. Should they trade their 31st or 32nd overall pick here and maybe find a prospect already on a roster or package it? Like if you package Joel Edmondson and 31st overall, Can you move up into the early 20s, late teens maybe? Can you get another potential top 10 pick next year from a team desperate to add who might not be very good and thinks Joel Edmondson is the answer? Edmonton. Um, My question is, do you trade up in a draft where we've talked to a lot of people? There's a lot of hidden gems in the first round. If you're Kent Hughes, do you not play the waiting game? And do you try and trade that pick for immediate help right now i don't think that they should trade it for immediate help if they're going to trade anything if they're going to trade a first round pick 
in a package, they need to move up in the first round because nothing that they get right now is going to have an impact in the next five years, right? If you're trading for immediate help, then you're not thinking long-term. And the Canadians, clearly, they're thinking long-term with what they did with Disho um, and what they what all the other moves they're making. You know, people keep complaining that they're being stagnant. I don't think they're being stagnant. I think they're being patient. So if you if there's no player left or if you're looking at the draft and it's not shaking out the way you want it, or there's a player available like 23 or whatever that you think that has, you know, has fallen unnecessarily or whatever it is, you package it to move up. But other than that, unless it's a prospect that will, will be ready to play in two years time or three years time and not today and not, not right now, I don't, I don't see them trading it. Everybody seems convinced that they're going to trade this pick. I don't think they're going to trade this pick. I think they would like to trade this pick for value. And that's a, there's a huge difference with that. So should they? Yeah, they should in the case that I mentioned. But if it's something for immediate help, the Canadians do not need immediate help. They just need some bodies to throw on the ice. That's what they need. They need to continue to allow their young players to grow and develop. And I think that's part of it is, and I'm going to bring up Edmonton's cap friendly here in the background, because that's my thought is see here. They, the Oilers do not have a first round pick this year. For one thing, they have one first round pick next year. They have, they're lacking a lot of upper round picks here. And if I go to their non-roster forwards, their younger guys, you have a Carter Savoy and Xavier Borgo, uh, Ty Tulio. Uh, um, Matt Vay Petrov, who I believe are all playing in the minors here. And then guys on defense, you know, someone not, uh, even if it's a Philip, uh, Philip Broberg, et cetera, can you trade and move up that they want a first round pick this year? Can you add that Joel Edmonton, Edmund, Joel Edmonton, Jesus, that Joel Edmondson that they may be looking at, or Jake Allen to help with Stuart Skinner right now? And maybe you take a contract back in that. It feels like there's a potential to add actual prospects in this. Like you said, not immediate help, short term, like near future help. Maybe Philip Roberg isn't the answer right away. Maybe Xavier Borgo is not the answer right away, but it gives them an opportunity to add more future pieces. So when the Mike Hoffman, the Yol Army, the Rem Pitlick, et cetera, have moved on, the Canadians can now have, hey, we have this other piece from this trade here. And that's where my thinking goes to is that. Trade this year's first round pick and either move up if you can or trade it and get a higher pick next year because there are teams that are going to want to add something this year. Teams that don't have first round picks, and there's a lot of them because those teams have been going for it. They are in their window. The Canadians are not in their window. I think I'm in favor of that, and I'd love to hear from some of our listeners. They can tweet us at LO underscore Canadians. Would you trade this first round pick to move up or to get a first round pick in next year's draft or something like that? It feels like Kent Hughes has a lot of opportunity here. And speaking of opportunity, the lockdown NHL mock draft is ongoing. We have made our pick in private. We will have a video on this and explaining everything about that. So you're going to want to stay tuned for that. And the only way you can know about that is if you're following us on Twitter, you can follow Laura at the Active Stick. You can follow myself at Scott Matley. You can follow the podcast at LO underscore Canadians. You can find us on Twitter or on YouTube, Locked On Canadians. Subscribe so you get all of our videos. You're going to want to be subscribed there because in, I believe it's three weeks now, two and a half, two weeks, either way, uh, Friday night before the draft, we are getting together with a very special guest. We're going to do a full live show, hanging out, talking prospects, talking questions with the draft leading up to there. We will hopefully have a better picture of what the Montreal Canadiens are going to do. We are very, very excited for everyone to come hang out. Yes, Laura? Friday night before the draft, not like Friday night on the night of the draft before the draft starts, but like Friday night, two weeks before the draft. Well, the good news is the draft isn't on a Friday night this year. It's on a Wednesday and Thursday for some godforsaken reason. Why? I... It is the 16th, by the way, is the night that we are doing that because the weekend after that, I will be in Toronto for a professional wrestling show because I am an adult with money to spend, which if you were in Toronto attending Forbidden Door 
and you see me, say hi. I will have the Calgary Hitman jersey on. You won't miss me. Trust me, it's bright pink. Laura, do you have any parting thoughts before I sign off for the show today? Uh, no. Uh, make sure you send us your mailbag questions, though. Yes, we will be recording the mailbag on Thursday night. Today is Tuesday, not Wednesday. I am thrown off because of the holiday, like I said yesterday. Please send us your mailbag questions, lockdowncanadiansgmail.com, at LO underscore Canadians. Folks, we're signing off, and we will see you all next time.